We're joined right now on RealerCulture.com by Jason Castleman. He is uh, owner of Den Vegan Egg Solutions based in Rycroft. How are you doing today, Jason? Great. Jason, uh, we've been hearing lots about uh, some poor growing conditions in the piece, in the piece this year. Um, obviously, the w- rest of Western Canada is really struggling with uh, too much moisture. What's happening in the piece right now? Well, I think what's happening, Sean, is uh, we have been dry not only this year, but uh, the last uh, vast number of years in the majority of the of the peace uh, country. We've um, we've had very little moisture last year, and that carried through to this year as well. We uh, um, didn't have much of a snow cover to uh, recharge ground moisture, um, but I, and I think what uh, it's just that continuous. Uh, lack of rainfall during the growing season has, has uh, not given the crops or the fields a chance to uh, to recharge with moisture. And uh, so this this spring, we've, we've got a crop established, we've got everything seeded, and uh, we've, we've been hitting some spotty showers, uh, you know, here and there, which is which is very welcome. It's, uh, we actually had um, uh, a decent amount of, uh, of moisture here last week. We, we got... Um, anywhere from half an inch to nine-tenths of an inch, uh, uh, most of it as snow, actually. Uh, there is snowing on June the 3rd, so uh, welcome to the peach country, I guess. And uh, But that, that moisture, it was uh, it was more than welcome. That, at that point, the crop was uh, was starting to fade very fast. We've, uh, in, the, in the trading area that I work in, in that Rycroft, uh, Eaglesham, uh, Fairview area, there's... Um, a few guys that are uh, growing some winter wheat, and and it had, it had already started to fire up. It had already the bottom leaves had started to turn yellow and brown off uh, just from lack of moisture, and and it was almost uh, you know within 24 hours of getting that that bit of snow and melting that it uh, you could see the the crops actually came back to back to life a little bit. So we kind of bought us a bit of time here, but um, I I think if we don't get continue to get uh, a few little showers or a little bit of moisture to continue on, we'd be back in a pretty serious situation. Well, so it and, is, uh, and we're all, you know, we all know that canola is a very important crop to the peace country. What, I guess, what, how does the canola crop look at this point? Uh, it's actually uh, here checking fields. I do a lot of crop scouting and uh, uh, field uh, field inspections or monitoring for uh, for guys. And I just noticed here yesterday that. Uh, we had some uh, some canola germinating uh, that had been seeded for about two weeks. Um, seeded at uh, you know two weeks ago and at a proper depth. You know we t- we try to tell guys to not seed too deep, and you know they can get into trouble doing that. But so they seeded it, but things started to really dry out. Uh, we we got some heavy or high winds, I guess you'd say, like um, that. Uh, there was some 60, 70 kilometer an hour winds. So guys thought they were seeding. At, in moisture, but after <clears throat> after there we got those winds, uh, everything just dried right out uh, down an inch uh, in the, in that top. So a lot of the canola was uh, was sitting in the dust, and uh, and I just noticed here yesterday that uh, that all of that canola because of that little bit of snow and, and rain that we did get on the um, last week actually helped to germinate that uh, those seeds, and uh, so I think we're. You know, it is it is uh, definitely delayed the uh, the crop having sat there, but um, hopefully now with uh, with moisture and, and good soil temperatures, uh, if we can if we can ha- keep that canola kind of wet enough to keep growing, the uh, the roots can can get down because there is moisture. There's there is moisture down maybe a an inch and a half to two inches down, uh, a little bit more moisture, but um, we just gotta gotta get it down into that so the roots can. Uh, can feed from that moisture that's up, that's down below. So, what what is the long term forecast look like? Uh, it's uh, you know we're definitely uh, definitely seeing that it's it's pretty clear uh, clear skies here for the next little bit. I'm, uh, as far as uh, as moisture, it's it's a spotty kind of thing. There's there's going to be some thunderstorms maybe uh, that that hit guys. Uh, you know, we have had we have had some rain events already this spring, where where there was some areas did get uh, you know more than a couple of inches. But you know, within uh, within eight or eight or ten miles from from where the, 
somebody got a couple of inches, uh, there is, you know, somebody else might have got a couple of tenths. Uh, so it, it was, it's, it's really spotty, just, you know, not a, not a general uh, moisture event to, uh, to, to give everything a, a good drink, for sure. Well, and as you mentioned, this is a multiple-year uh, issue. Financially, how are some of your farm customers uh, handling this? Is, is the pretty, I imagine, a very stressful situation. I think what uh, you know what a lot of guys are doing is uh, is definitely crunching the numbers. Uh, there's a very, um, uh, I guess the, the the managers of the acres are, are looking at what they what they have to do on the bare minimum. You know where where there's uh, a guy might have said, hey, well, it's uh, you know if there's if there's one wild oat, there's got to be a hundred. So we're just gonna we're supposed to spray everything for wild oats kind of thing, but. Yeah, this year, no. It's uh, they're definitely spending the time in the field to to do some pretty intensive uh, field checking and scouting to make sure that if they uh, if they are going to uh, spray for wild oats, that it's going to be something that's significant. And uh, I know we did start off the year. Uh, one of the things that we tried to encourage with our guys a lot is a uh, is a pre seed burn off or a pre emerge burn off, and uh, with you know, by that's that's probably your your cheapest uh, weed control right now at glyphosate at uh, at whatever it is, uh, you know, uh, three or four bucks a liter, whatever. Uh, pass with uh, glyphosate before the crop was up or before seeding was uh, that's that's money well spent. It is it is a a hard thing to do timeliness because of you know trying to get things seeded and then you have to um, jump onto the sprayer or get get a bunch of acres ahead with the sprayer done. But that was one of the things that, that we had guys doing this year that uh, that I think made, made a difference as far as the uh, um, money in crop that they're going to spend on weed control. Uh, another thing, oh, I was just going to say, too, we do have we do have guys that are, uh, you know, had had established the crop with a, with a, a certain amount of, of nutrients. And if we do get moisture, uh, we could be top dressing uh, the uh, with some some liquid fertilizer, um, you know, something that's not hasn't been done a whole bunch up here in the peace country. But guys are definitely saying that if they if they do get some moisture coming in, the yield potential is there, then they they'll they'll top up with uh, with some fertilizer top dressing. Well, and, that, and that's one of the things is that uh, one of the advantages I guess of putting on some you know foliar fertilizer afterwards is that if you do get the moisture you're going to get your bang for your buck as opposed to putting it on dry with the seed and not really sure if it's going to rain. Yeah, and, and that's what happened last year. Like, guys did did establish the crop with some pretty high uh, uh, rates of fertilizer and, and the yields, um, it, they just didn't end up using it. Like, we had probably, a, you know, a 14 to 17 bushel canola crop uh, last year, maybe a, you know, 25 bushel wheat crop uh in a lot of the peace country, so guys said, "Hey, if we can we can grow that without uh, without a whole bunch of fertilizer, and and maybe we can you know put it on later on if we uh, if it looks uh, looks like things are going to be in better shape." Okay, Jason. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, if we could build a pipeline to ship some of the excess water we have here to you, we would definitely do that. But I hope hopefully the skies uh, put some water on the ground soon. You bet. Thanks very much, Sean.